Anger. Is it a way to go around attacking people, or is it a completely natural emotion? Let's discuss it. Today I want to talk about anger and why there's a huge stigma on it. It's something I experience a lot myself because if you go through my videos here online, you'll see that I get angry a lot. I'm a ranter. Primarily I get angry in my news article rants, but not my counseling ones or my advice ones or whatever because that's passionate, important stuff. When I talk about a very negative news story, something terrible a person did, I'm going to express anger towards that story or that person. And in general, anger has a stigma because people associate anger with revenge or swearing or abuse or attacking somebody or insulting somebody. But actually, this is not the case per se. Anger is actually a completely natural emotion like sadness, depression, happiness, joy, laughter, anger, frustration, irritation. These are just simply emotions, natural emotions, that everybody feels at some point in their lives. Or, even, or just day to day. Anger can go overboard to violent points, of course. Anger can cause extremely big fights to escalate and make it even reach abusive points where people are not just simply yelling at each other, but where abuse can start happening a mental abuse, emotional abuse, and even physical abuse. It can escalate. But that's where the fine line is drawn. Where people need to learn to not just not get angry, but you need to learn how to control your anger. That's the most important thing. It's not about not getting angry, it's about controlling anger. You see, the idea of not getting angry is something that you created within yourself. You know, you stop yourself from getting angry out of fear of hurting somebody else, or yelling at somebody else, offending somebody else, or because you don't want to swear at somebody else, or have an argument with somebody else, or whatever. But these things are not bad as long as you can do it civilly. And that's where it comes down to, learning how to control your anger. Yes, it's very true that many people are born with anger management issues, but this is obviously not the case for the entire world. You see, when you release anger, and you talk it out, say you're in a relationship, Couples are going to disagree. Couples are going to argue. And it's very good that when you feel angry or frustrated with your partner, it's good to learn how to control it and deal with whatever is making you angry, but in a civil and mature way. Sit them down, learn how to communicate, and talk to them properly. You know? Discuss with them what's bothering you and why it's bothering you. You know? But the people who don't express anger at all, because they have their own fears and such, those people usually resort to revenge. Because anger can't be bottled up forever. It's impossible. You're either going to express your anger in a way that could be yelling, but hopefully you've learned how to control it so that you can do it civilly as part of a discussion like, you know, you really upset me, or that kind of makes me angry, but let's talk it out. But the thing is, if you bottle it up and don't ever say anything, out of fear, you're only damaging yourself. And these people usually tend to get revenge on the person. Because like I said, you can't just bottle it up forever. And they go and release it in a very negative way. And aside from revenge, there are actually other methods in which people who bottle up anger in a very unhealthy way release it. They do revenge, but they also tend to be very passive aggressive people. This is very unhealthy, and these are the kind of things that come from people who are afraid of anger or don't know how to control anger or don't know how to release anger. It is also very important to create methods of releasing your anger in a healthy way. Keeping it inside bottled up only, ma only makes you explode later on to a in a way where it's unreasonable because you didn't learn how to control it before. But there are very effective ways to release anger but also do it in a healthy way. You know, take me for example. I'm here online. Yes, I do make a lot of videos where I talk about negative things and a lot of times it gets me angry and I go and I get ranty and stuff like that. That makes sense, we know that. 
but at the same time now, I believe that what I'm doing is healthy. You know, because I'm taking out my frustrations, I'm talking about things that are very negative, and I'm taking out my frustrations, but you know what? What am I doing it to? Yes, I understand YouTube is public, and anybody can watch my videos, but in reality, all I'm doing is talking to a camera. You know? By speaking to this camera, I'm not causing any harm to anybody. And people don't, don't need to be offended by me saying the word fuck. You don't need to. That's your... If people get offended by a swear word, it's your own issue. But in reality, all I'm doing is talking to a camera. I'm not punching anybody. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm not doing anything else in the real world. I'm talking to a camera. And it's a very healthy way of releasing frustrations. It's a very healthy way of releasing anger and what you have inside of you. And even people who don't, you know, go on YouTube and rant, of course, um, there is very healthy ways to release your anger on a regular basis. You know, what about people who are so frustrated from work, for instance, and they go home and they roll up their pillow and start punching the hell out of it? That's healthy. Punching a pillow, releasing your anger, because anger is not something to be afraid of. Anger is something to accept as a natural emotion that you're going to feel as long as you don't use it to hurt other people or abuse other people. Release in healthy ways. In the privacy of your own home, you know, where you can punch a pillow or, or scream or, or listen or, or dance, you know, because dancing is a, good, is a good way of expressing emotions like anger or sadness. You know, do it in healthy ways that's not going to affect another person. Some people actually believe that anger is only a reflection of you being threatened. For example, say somebody disagrees with your opinions, you're being threatened. For instance, there's other methods, of course, as well. But this is actually not true at all. And they try and put it across like you're being immature. Oh, you're just getting angry because I'm disagreeing with you. That's not true at all. Yes, um, that's one of the aspects, one of the reasons that people can get angry because they're being questioned or they're being disagreed with or they're, you know, they're being put on the spot and they don't like the, com the, the, the discomfort. But that's not the only way that anger exists. You know, there's anger between couples when you have you know, arguments, and there's also passionate uh, arguments. There's also, like me for example, if I talk about a news story that's really terrible and I get angry about it, I'm not being threatened at all. I'm just expressing my anger towards a murderer or a rapist or a pedophile or whatever, you know. And let's not forget the kind of, the very healthy kind of arguments. Between couples, a lot of arguments are actually based off of passion. There have actually been numerous studies done that have literally proven that most arguments between couples happen because they care too much. Yeah, arguments between couples happen because of caring too much, not because of genuine hatred for each other. This has actually been proven. But all in all, this is what anger really is. This is what it means to release anger. This is what it means to control it and how to deal with it. And to accept that anger is not a bad thing. It's not bad to swear or to get upset or to express yourself because that's the overall meaning here. It's expressing yourself. You should not be afraid of your emotions. And you should not be afraid of anger. Just as long as you're not using it to hurt other people. But there are ways to control it. Thank you for watching. For the record.